All right, y'all, 602 Booster back at it again behind the slow bop. I figured I'd take this chance to uh, let y'all know what I think about what the best dual sport is right now in 2018. Again, we're in November right now, so it's pretty much end of 2018, going into 2019. I'm stuck behind some slow traffic, but it's all good. Gives me a chance to talk to you guys. There we go, speeding up a little bit. Getting out of the construction zone. Yeah, um, of course you know I'm gonna say my DR650. You know, not my DR650, but the Suzuki DR650 to me is still the best dual sport that you can get for the bucks. And there's plenty of reasons why I say it despite what people think might be what you call issues or problems or, or even just design flaws. I mean, to tell you the truth, number one, you can't beat this price. A dual sport over 400 cc's at, I mean, let's say you go for one brand new, 2019, I believe they're going for 6,500 out the door. That's cheaper than most of the stuff that's coming out from Kawasaki and Honda right now, as far as dual sports are concerned. We're talking about dual sports in its class. Now, Kawasaki is getting rid of the 650. We know that they're getting rid of their KLR. It's a sad day for my uh, KLR riders. But at the same time, you know, if you're looking to get yourself a newer KLR, no doubt, the parts and the prices are gonna be much lower. So you shouldn't have any issues finding yourself a nice used KLR for the right price. And no doubt, there's so many of them that got built, I, I doubt there's gonna be a lot of parts that are lost, but when you consider what dual sports are about, you mean, you know, crashing, riding off road, those parts are gonna be a little bit harder to find than you might think. Even though they were made in such abundance, again, you're talking about a motorcycle that was designed to take a beating. And eventually, bikes that are taking a beating are bound to break. And when they're bound to break, you gotta replace those parts. And uh, since there's no more new ones coming off the line, you're gonna be hard pressed to find them. Another point, these things, again, being Japanese, you know, little four-cylinder, I shouldn't say Japanese four-cylinder, Japanese single thumper, they're cheap. They're cheap to fill up, cheap to maintain and everything, man. What's up? Nah, it's at the market. Yeah, it's a five gallon. Yeah, it's five gallons. The other one is like two gallons. They're super small. I can't do that. Nah, but this thing will get you all over the place. He was asking me about the gas tank. He wanted to know if this was original or if it was at the market. No doubt it's at the market. But, um, yeah, anybody that's looking to get a bike like this, I strongly recommend if you're, gonna, if you're planning on taking it anywhere long distance, get yourself an aftermarket tank, a bigger tank. Get one of the Cherubis or Clark or, you know, INS, one of those guys. I mean, they'll fit whichever bike, you know, that you have. If you got another type of dual sport, I recommend getting it. But yeah, guys, um, number three, I'm definitely going to have to say that even though the bike is carbureted, I don't see what the problem is. People are so worried about the fact that this bike being still carbureted in 2018 again going into 2019 but honestly it doesn't bother me i don't have i mean i do prefer fuel injection don't get me wrong i'm not one of those cats that has all these carbureted bikes and just swears by carburation because that's all that i buy and that's all that i can afford trust me i know fuel injection is the future i mean it's 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 you know it's really you know the next step it's the next gen you know what i'm saying so i understand that about fuel injection but i guess the point that i make that even with fuel injection you're still gonna have problems just like anything else my main thing with fuel injection is that people are saying that fuel injection is you know completely blowing all of the bikes away why you know why is suzuki still holding on to this outdated you know fuel delivery system when all of these other brands like Honda, they've got fuel injection, Yamaha, they have fuel injection, Kawasaki has fuel injection in, in their KLX models. But to tell you the truth, look at the KLR. The KLR didn't have any fuel injection. People were still buying it.
So I don't see why Suzuki would put fuel injection into a bike that's already selling well. You know what I'm saying? If you got something that's working good, I mean, yeah, you can improve on a little bit, you know, improve the ergonomics, improve, you know, engine displacement. You can improve the transmission, the clutch. But if you're able to keep costs low by putting in a carburetor as opposed to fuel injection, I, I personally don't care. I mean, because I tell you right now, if you put fuel injection to a bike like this, you're going to turn that bike into an $8,000 to $10,000 bike, all things considered. No doubt, it's going to respond well. It's going to have the snappy throttle. I mean, they may even put wire by wire instead of, you know, by the cables. Again, I personally think that learning how to use and learning how to maintain a bike with a carburetor, it's always an essential skill. Not saying that you don't need to, you know, learn how to use fuel injectors, but to tell you the truth, fuel injectors are so simple. Carburetors do require a bit of understanding and know-how. But that's part of the fun, I guess, in my opinion, of owning a dual sport that's carburetor, any bike that's carburetor for that matter. You really get to delve in and work on your bike. I mean, tell you the truth, I've worked on my bikes that have fuel injection. The only thing that I know that I can do without any special tools is put on like a fuel map or like a Bazaz or a Power Commander, one of the two. And all I'm doing is just plugging it in. You know, I can go on the laptop and I can configure and all that kind of stuff, but I personally don't know how to configure those types of things. That's that's just, you know, too technical for me. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but hey, I definitely appreciate a good carb, you know what I'm saying? That's all I can say. But yeah, don't discount carbureted bikes just because fuel injection is the latest technology. That's pretty much the point that I'm trying to make. Don't do that. That's the worst thing that you can do is to make that, you know, it's to make that assumption, you know, that carbureted bikes are worse because they're carbureted. It's old tech. It's not the case. And that's one thing that I wish people would understand. If you're dealing with a carbureted bike, most people that want a carbureted bike don't want to deal with the issues of fuel injection. They're comfortable with the carb. Let me step off this thing for a second and show you what I'm talking about. Oh, it's getting a little late, but... I mean, honestly, this bike is so simple. It's so easy to maintain. I don't think adding fuel injectors is gonna really solve the problem. I mean, real talk. Ah, oh, it's beautiful up here. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Again, again, DR650, I honestly think is one of the best buys that you can have. You can take this bike almost anywhere and probably get parts for it. You can take it overseas where other manufacturers use carburetors. <laughs> it's, it'd be so hard to find a fuel injection system or a set of throttle bodies or whatever for a bike like this. I don't know if I can go over to India or whatever and get a set of fuel injectors for a Honda CRF230L or for a YZ, uh, for a, what is it? I think it's the YZ450F, I think. I don't think I could find that as easy or as less expensive as a car, as a, you know, as a car, you know, I don't think I could find something less expensive than what I'm dealing with right here. And again, if you ball on the budget, you could afford it, by all means, get it. But to tell you the truth, I still have just as much fun on my little carbureted DR650 over something fuel injected that I'm gonna have to spend thousands to repair when something breaks. But that's just me, guys. I mean, I like the DR650. I think it's still going to be a bike to compete with going into 2019. I don't know any of the bikes out there in its class that are still competing with it. Again, if you haven't heard, the KLR650, again, that's a, that's a done bike. Even though it's a wonderful bike, almost bought one myself, but the DR650 kind of won out. So... Just wanted to let you guys know about that. I don't even know of any other 650s. I mean, is Honda still doing their XR650? I don't even know anybody that rides one of those. Honestly. I don't know any of the vloggers anyway that still ride a 650 that's not either a DR650 or a KLR650. And again, you won't find those new anymore. 
But let me know what you guys think in the comments. What's the best dual sport bike that you feel is going to be the best in 2019? Let me know in the comments section below. 602 out.